Welcome back. This is Joe Blasco again here with Bill Corso. Bill, we left off with just, just uh, firstly, <laughs> your energy level is <laughs> unbelievable. That's good. Unbelievable. I love what I do. I love, yeah, well, I love my it's job. Very apparent. Um, you do meet a lot of people. This is what it like... takes. This is what it takes, folks. <laughs> this is the kind of energy level and the kind of passion that I'm constantly talking about that it takes to get these awards back there. Yeah. All right. Look, uh, this is a great. Look, there's no. You talk to anybody about what we do. They get excited just hearing about it. I know, I know. I'm not talking about accounting or numbers or, you know, maybe if you had a your lawyer and you had a murder or something. It's a, it's interesting. You can't have a conversation about what we do without being interested or excited right, about exactly. it. There are very few professions that are like that. Right. So, exactly. You know. So I, well, it's we're fun. blessed. It's yeah, fun. It's a we fun are blessed. Profession. We get up in the morning and we love going to work. Yeah. It's, it's like, great. Oh, God, it's great. Day, you know? It's so much so it gets me in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, well, let's back yeah. up. Now, we, okay. We, we keep, okay, so you're just out of school now. Just out of school. I, how did you get the, we never did, how the, did you get the first job? Well, the job? first job. So what was the first well, job? Well, again, I, you know, I trace it back to the school. Russell got the job right. with Matthew. Right. Through your Matthew. first big job. What through, was your first well, big job? I, it was the blob. The blob. And I got that because of and Russell. It makeup. You did no, but it was effects, it was special right? effects, but it was but there was a makeup side to it, although I wasn't part of the makeup side to it. And the reason I got it was again Russell, because of working at Matthews, yes. had heard that that um, Lyle Conway, who was an amazing creature designer, who yes. did you know he did the Little Shop of Horrors plant and and Oscar nominated for that, and then Dark Crystal, all the hints and stuff. Yes. Phenomenal yes. artist, phenomenal sculptor, yes. and I and I love to sculpt so. He was a big hero of mine, and he was in town, and he was going to be doing the blob. And and again, at the time, it was anything effects oriented I could get my hands on. And I had done some, again through Russell and through his networking, yes. I met people yes. just by hanging out yes. with him, and and got little jobs on little effects movies. So I got to sculpt and do some makeup effects right. on little movies. So did you create the actual blob? Well, you... well, so you well, know, tell us about yeah. It. <laughs> Russell went for the interview. I went with him. I got the job. Russell didn't get the job, which was sad at the on the, the, the at the time. That was not good. <laughs> um, but I begged to go with him on the interview because yeah. I had no way of getting a job. I mean, I still had not made. So that let me under, let's make us understand this. You both went. Together we both went together as partners. No, just as two guys that were going to interview, because he was looking for a crew. So you interviewed separately? Yeah, hoping we could both get on the job. I see. Yeah, he was looking oh for my. sculptors and lab people right. and everything. And, and he's the one that turned you on? To well, the problem was, yeah, and the problem was he was looking for a creative types who could think outside the box right. and create something that hadn't been done you before. You do more than just think outside the box. You, I mean, you're way outside yeah. of the box, physically. So <laughs> that was the trick. So, and right. Russell, because he was so grounded in, in literal lab work, and he was a great mold maker and this and that yes. and everything, at the time, that's not what Lyle was looking for. Right. He didn't need that, because right. he wasn't doing that. Right. He wasn't doing traditional makeup effects. Right. And, and so, so he thought, my way of thinking was good, I would be a good person to bring in. So again, there were five of us at the beginning of the blob, and, and I was one of them. And, and I, the people that I met on that were are friends to this day, because we went through a lot. And, and it was funny, because at the time, and, and then a makeup artist by the name of Tony Gardner, yes, who used to Tony work Gardner. for Rick Baker, Very that was his first show on his own. Yes. And Tony got the job because he had met the director, who was Chuck Russell, yes. you know, who's done a lot of movies, he did The Mask and everything. And, uh, he had become friends with Chuck, and Chuck said, well, I'm going to give you your big break. He was working for Greg Canham at the time yes. and was going to hire Greg to do the blob. Yes. And, and, and on the sly, I asked Tony, could you handle it if I gave you the job? Which Tony said, yeah, I'd love it. So, so Tony got his big break. Lyle was in charge of the blob. Tony was in charge of all the makeup effects that would happen to the people. Yes. And our shop was this huge, you know, 6,000 know, 6, square foot facility in Hollywood, on Hollywood Boulevard, split right down the middle. Half blob, Where half Hollywood makeup Boulevard effects. Oh, it was right, it's right around the corner from Fredericks of Hollywood. You're kidding. Oh, yeah. For uh, nine months, that's where I lived. On the second straight. floor. No, it was first floor. It was first a big floor. warehouse. It was one wow. huge warehouse. It was a side street. It was like, no. Oh, I see, I see. So. So, and that was an amazing learning experience because it was 24 hours, seven days a week, sleeping there at the shop and just coming up with ideas on how we could make the blob yes. and everything. And, and so that was. So, how, what was the blob? The blob wound up being. <laughs> and this was after, <laughs> We're all waiting yeah, for after this. months of, of <laughs> trial and research and development. 
a, a wet blanket. It was it was a it was a quilted China silk blanket Amazing. that was quilted that was painted with veins and all you know organic that was filled with methicel thickened water, yes. and and when you lumped it all up, it was this disgusting gnarly textured glob of yes. you know of, of of goo, and when you got underneath it and puppeteered it, yes. it had a life to it. It looked like it was yes. alive. Yes. So everything was miniature. We had a huge miniature town, and we just had a hole in the floor with this wet blanket over our hands, <laughs> and we were like this. And most of the blob is me puppeteering it underneath, underneath. because Lyle thought I That's had the amazing. best blob That's personality. Amazing. And you had the best blob personality. <laughs> so every day I would go home covered in slime, and, and that was my first big movie. So says that was great, and it was not doing makeup effects and watching. Across the way, Tony and all of his guys, and he had a lot of name people working on it, sculpting melted yes. heads yes. And, and people ro melting and rotting. And, so and all. this was Tony Gardner. Tony Gardner's first, first big first movie big on his own. First effort as well. Yeah, on his own. He did a great job, and I, I so longed to be on that side of yes. the job because I was covered in slime, yes. and I had no clay, and they were doing <laughs> makeup on people and cool burn makeups, and, and Mike Smithson did this amazing burn makeup, and I was like, uh, that's I want to be over there. And one yes. day Dick Smith came by to see Lyle yes. and took a tour, and again, he spent more time on the makeup side, <laughs> and, and I so wanted to be over there. But, but that, was my, that was the first big job. And then from there, I met so many people, and, and only four of us, went from the very first day of the job to the very last day of the job. Yes. It was so long and so hard, and so many people quit and were fired, and, but four of us lasted, and all the way through shooting, and in, even you know Lyle being fired, <laughs> which halfway through, which was not pleasant, but <laughs> again, I'm 18. I mean, it was, it was a this huge thing. This is the thing. real world of makeup yeah, folks. This is a huge thing. So learned a lot, and that was my springboard. And from there, I, I met people, and I started yes. getting a little work. Um, the my, next, the next, film the next the big, well, the next big step, because I done, I done, I did a couple little things, and then the next thing is the total Hollywood story, yes. uh, it, much like being discovered on Hollywood Boulevard yes. or by the, you know, or then the restaurant by the producer. But um, it was, it was, you know, at the time, and we don't do it as much anymore. But there was the big makeup artist uh, Halloween party. That was a huge oh, thing back in the '80s. Yeah, and that was that was given by the union. What was the well, there was there was a, there was a few, but it was the smaller yeah. ones that actually were more yes. potent. But there yes. was a big union one as well. Um, but so at the time, everybody V. Neil had was famous for big Halloween parties. She always gives her phenomenal great parties. Party. V's and Christmas parties were yeah, the best. Yeah, amazing. Well, it used to be V's Halloween parties were the, Halloween were, parties. were the talk of legend. Yes. So, and that was before me. I came into it, she maybe, she had had one more, but that was about it. Right. Too busy. Uh, but at one of these parties, uh, you know, and I was, I was, you know, we would do ourselves all up and everything. I went, and I went dressed as the child catcher from Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. <laughs> Which is one of my favorite characters, and I just—it was just an amazing character makeup, yes. I thought, and creepy. Yeah. And I always remember that guy. And I and I did it all up and went to Western Costume and rented the costume and everything and, and did it all up. And did you get the actual costume? No, no, but I I, I faked it pretty well. Yeah. I mean, it was pretty great. And and everywhere I went, and I went to an industry party that was all makeup artists, yeah. and everybody was you know. Very impressed, like, oh, I remember that guy. That's great. You really nailed it. Fabulous. Oh, it wasn't, selling yourself. and it wasn't a very over-the-top makeup-y right, thing. Right. It was a real finessed, you know, yes, subtle thing. Yes. But I had it was a long nose, and but all of your makeups are like that. It was, they're, they're, they are very it was sophisticated. A, yeah, it was a good kind of yes. precursor. Well, lucky for me, at the time, at the makeup party was uh, at the at the Halloween party was Rick Baker, and he came up and commented on my makeup and said he really liked it. Yes, and that had. I had met him once before at a Fangoria convention. Shook his hand, took a picture with him, yes. like the fan that I was, and that was it. Um, so here I am now uh, as a makeup artist, you know, and I'm yes. in my makeup, and he says, well, I think that's really cool. And, and I go, I would really like to work for you one day, you know. <laughs> and I remember stuttering. <laughs> and he said, well, he goes, I am looking for a couple of more people for the call life. my shop and come down How fantastic. and interview. And it was for, and he literally had, and it was, the, again, perfect timing. It's October, yes. big movie start at the end of the year. Yes. He had just finished staffing up, or was in the process of staffing up Gremlins. Yeah, he, he, he is a, an amazing man, Rick Baker. No. I have a, a Rick Baker story, and I don't think he'll mind my sharing. Um, I did a film called Track of the Moon Beast. Mm -hmm. Remember that one, Rick? Whew. 
that was way back in the early days. This was before Rick Baker became Rick Baker. Sure. Rick Baker was hanging out over uh, at uh, Johnny Chambers' mm -hmm. lab, and and uh, I I was doing this film called Track of the Moon Beast, where I did this this lizard creature, right? And I had all of the transitions sculpted of this man changing into a lizard creature. I didn't I didn't have the hands or the feet done, right? And and I, I was sanding the molds, you know, and refining the molds, making them look pretty. You, know? you do all your own lab work? Yeah, yeah, I did everything. I did all my own lab work. Phenomenal. Completely. That's back in the day when we did everything, you know, yeah. we did our own lab Nobody work. does that now. No, no. Kevin Haney. Yeah, exactly. Maybe <laughs> Kevin Haney. So anyway, I, in, I, cut my, I, I got my thumb caught in the sander, and it ripped off my, my, right, my right thumb, not, uh, the nail. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I called Johnny Chambers, and I said, John, I, 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 I can't sculpt. My hand is like this. I need to finish the hands and the feet. I said, do you know anybody that knows how to sculpt? And he says, oh, there's this kid. Yeah, his name is Rick Baker. Uh, you know, he's, uh, he's pretty damn good for a young man. I don't know how old Rick must have been then, you know, you know in, his, in his late teens or mid-teens. And so I called him, and he came over. He was a real nice guy. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, he actually came in and he, 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 he I had all the, all the sculptures done and he poured, he poured all of the negatives for the sculptures in a manner which I had never seen done before. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was taught by George Bow, and the way George taught me was everything had to be just so, and, and when you get the pieces, you know, you, you get the wood and you staple it together and you make it all nice and neat and you clay it all out. Rick came in and he put a roll of, 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 uh, a roll of, of clay around it and, he, and, and, and just enough to keep the, the, the negative material, the, the uh, ultra kill, right. from seeping under and, and right. closing the mold. And he just poured all this over, and I think we weren't even—I think we were working a dental stone. Mm. And he did this, and he did it so quickly. It was like my head was spinning. I'm looking. This kid had come in, you know, and he went bam, 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 and it was finished. It was completed. And and then he says, he says, uh, well, do you, uh, is it okay if I take the hands home? to sculpt them. And I said, well, you can do anything you want. Just get it done. Yeah. So I had taken a cast of the actor's hands, and I had cut off the fingers, and I had put uh, uh, a... Pins. Yeah, sure. exactly. In, in, you know, so that just pieces of wire sticking mm -hmm. out so that we could, we, you know, make the sculpt sure. onto the wires. And, um, and, and as an arm, a, a, you know, armature. Sure. And so he took these home, and he came, he, 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 he molded them, he got it completely done, and he came back and he brought me the most beautiful, and we have them in our museum still mm -hmm. to this day. Rick, you've got to come by and see these. It'll bring back those old days, like we really need to bring these old days back. And, and, and there are two negative molds that he did, I believe they're done in hydrokel, and a V11 hydrokel, and they are of the, of the creature's hands and feet. And thank God for Rick Baker, because had Rick not come into the picture at that time, creature wouldn't I, have the hands creature would have hands and feet. Rick was terrific, and, and uh, you know, I hadn't been for him, I would have never gotten that picture finished. But that's a Rick Baker story. And then, then, then years later, I saw Rick at Columbia Cosmetics uh, there, and uh, he was coming in and buying some some makeup, and um, it was something like, uh, it was uh, he said something like, uh, he says you can teach me. Prosthet no, you can teach me beauty makeup, mm -hmm. and I'll teach you prosthetics. I said, I'll learn beauty uh, prosthetics from you any day. I said, however, I don't think I'm ever going to need to teach you beauty makeup because you're never going to need it because he's such a genius with everything that he does with his prosthetics and, and, and all. And with the apes, the most unbelievable apes, obviously, you got Planet of the Apes. Let's get back to you. Now, you were, you were working with the... So Rick. I did. So I did get the job with Rick, and I. Sorry, I'm sorry. Oh, that's okay. I didn't need to go off on that tangent. I don't know. I hope How it was can you talk about? Well, that's <laughs> well, that's the thing, though. I mean, you you, you need people to, to generate interest. Yes. And and uh, and Rick's one of those people who's brought attention to a field that otherwise would never have gotten attention. You know, it's a it's it's a kind of an obscure little profession. Oh, and he's taken it to another yeah, well, level. he got you know, and, and it's because of him and work and others like him, Stan Winston and everybody that that did work that generated so much you know publicity 
which before it didn't get publicity, exactly. and and uh, and got kids like me and you know excited about it and involved. No, there was a know. time they, they, they were, no. the makeup artist credit didn't even appear. No, no, when, you know it was just the department head of the studio right, and yeah. So they they brought it out of the closet mm -hmm. and out of the garage right, and exactly. made it a, a huge industry. Exactly. You know, which is I mean Rick credits Stan for doing you know making the big leap, but but uh, yeah, no, the, it, it made it a, a great profession to to get into. So. So working for him was one of those goals. Yes. How did yeah. you get your job with Rick Baker? Well, again, it was a Halloween party. Yeah. I interviewed. So he came up to you. He came up to me, liked to my work. makeup. Okay. Uh, I interviewed with him like the couple of days later. How long did you work? Uh, I was okay. there for eight months on Gremlins. Yes. And and it was such a huge show. And that was we, the first thing you did. That was him? the first thing I did for him. And uh, and I worked in the shop as an, as one of the art guys, and I sculpted a little bit, yes. and I painted and yeah. sculpted a little, painted a little mogwai. Did Mitch Devane? Uh, cause I, there no, was Mitch a... wasn't there at the time. Yeah, he, he not was, at the time. I he see. wasn't there. Um, but there was a phenomenal amount. It's the very first day. It, that's a, it was a very humbling experience. There was over a hundred people at his lab at that point, and and uh, he had a couple of other buildings and. And at the time, Russell was working there. There was a slew of people. A lot of people I worked with on the blog were working there. So yes. I actually had friends put in a good word for me. Yes. And, um, but it, it was it was a very humbling experience because up till there's a certain point in your early career where you wonder where you where you stack up against other artists. Yes. You know, I did because yes. I'm a very competitive yes. artist. You know, I no I, <laughs> wanted to be really good. I wanted to be the best, but I, at the time, it's like, well, where am I on the scale of other artists? Yes. Am I like, am I like you know, on a scale of one to ten? Am I a four? Am I a six? Am I you know right. where where am I? So, and and what can I work on to be better? And yes. So at the time, I, when I interviewed, it was like, well, I didn't know where I was at. I thought I was okay. You know, I thought I was good, better at some stuff than others. Right. But that first day walking in and finding out where I was going to sit and seeing the work that was there, that was humbling because <laughs> I felt like I knew nothing. Yes. And I never picked up a sculpt until in my life because to see the work that was Amazing, that right? was museum quality work and it was just being thrown away like they're just making stuff like that. Yeah. And so that was frightening. I mean, it was, it was humbling and frightening. and 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 just inspiring as, as anything. We have to break right now, just for a very, very short time. We'll be right back, don't go away. We have more with Bill Corso right after this.